I just wanted to announce one thing. Uh, early this morning when I was discussing uh, Skeptic Camp, and it's uh, what it is, and it's history. I mentioned briefly that uh, Skeptic Camp is actually a Christian group. Yes. Uh, and he's here today. Yes. 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 Yes.
basically what they're going to do is walk around and tell spooky stories and try to talk to the dead in your public cemetery. Is this ethical? Maybe not so much. And they are out now saying the cemetery is haunted. It is. It's a fact. So you got to come on this tour if you're interested in ghosts. <clears throat> but let's take a look at some of their claims. Hopefully we can see these. Can we do the dimple light? Tell them we're good in the dark. Computer in the dark. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first one I'm going to show you here is them using a. How many people have heard of the Frank's box or the telephone to the dead or the spirit box or. Okay, for those of you that haven't, I'm just going to do it really easily. Broken radio, they think, talks to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> if one more, ask us later. But in this short clip, and they repeat it a couple of times at the end, the ghost at the cemetery, you got to remember this is at the cemetery, threatens them with certain death. <clears throat> From their own forum, 
Sorry I've been AWOL for a while. Things have been pretty busy around here. Pretty excited about tonight's investigation. We've been granted an all-access pass to one of the city cemeteries around town. Sorry I can't go into much detail right now. This was back on April the 9th, 2010. So they were handed the keys to the cemetery over a year ago. And they have been spending a lot of time in there. First contact. Now we, uh, we received an email uh, from a woman who was very concerned about this. And uh, she had actually contacted the Benevolent Society, who uh, basically runs the cemetery. And uh, they, when, when she contacted them, you know, we're like, well, don't, don't talk to us, talk to the Benevolent Society. So she emails them, and they're like, that's great. Can we have you come talk to us, and we'll go over everything and try to sort this out? She kind of panicked a little bit. And she said, no, I think I'm going to have Rocky Mountain Paranormal do it for me, stand in for me. So we went ahead and we sent them uh, an email about what we saw was wrong with them doing these haunted tours. At that point, the Benevolent Society decided that they would uh, go over some of the concerns that they had with this actually going on in the cemetery. Lots of vandalism has happened in the past, as well as a lot of hurt things going on. Historical information being twisted all over the place. Uh, spreading of urban legends, we're going to go into that one pretty deep here. Uh, disrespectful activities, uh, which we've learned are now unlawful. Uh, encouragement for others to break into the cemetery after it's closed, which we have proof of. And proceeds not being given back to the Benevolent Society and the cemetery as promised. They have delivered back some of the money, but not all. Vandalism. Well, here's a good one. You got this nice uh, angel, and then now we have an angel without a hand. Uh, grave markers being tipped over, uh, crypts being broken into. Um, a lot of this is, is fairly typical for a lot of cemeteries, but uh, when you have these haunted tours that encourage this kind of behavior, uh, whether they need to or not, this stuff escalates. And uh, anybody know how much it costs just for a headstone these days? Oh, yeah. To repair one. But the big question is, we need to determine how bad it really is, but how do you do that? Well, first, you disguise yourself as any other image from <laughs> <laughs> And then you send them an email saying, we want to pay in cash, is that okay? <laughs> because, well, A, all of our PayPal accounts are associated with our real email addresses, and we don't want that happening. But also, it would be interesting to see if a bunch of people show up with cash if they actually report it. Yeah, no paper trail, will they do it? Now, when you go to start the tour, they make you sign a release. You saw the video before, where the ghost threatened them with certain death. Well, luckily they have a release, so they can't be held responsible. They're dangerous and inherited in investigating the paranormal. Mortals are serious personal, spiritual, and mental injuries. Assume full responsibility for the risk of personal, spiritual, mental injury, death, and property damage. So you have to sign this before you can go on the tour. Now, that's one of the concerns that the Benevolent Society had, was that they would ID them when they had to sign the releases. That was also one of our concerns. <laughs> Strangely enough, they never ID'd us. They just let us sign it and assume that we signed it as we actually are. But uh, let's, let's look at a little background research here. On their website, they claim we are a licensed and insured paranormal group and registered with the state of Colorado as a nonprofit organization. And they are. They check a little box on their business license that says nonprofit. They're not 501c3. They're not registered with the IRS. It's a very low level nonprofit. But if you look a little closer at their website, 100% of the proceeds go towards a nonprofit group. Or in other words, we're donating it to ourselves. Now, they often donate to other nonprofit organizations, but we haven't found a record of it yet. Other than pass it through a little money to the Benevolent Society. 
says 100% of all proceeds go towards a nonprofit group. Um, all proceeds go to the community, paranormal research, and to ensure that they can better assist others. Um, I, I don't know where these proceeds go from this long paragraph. Any of you got any idea other than the fact that they can cover themselves when they keep it? Well, we've got lots of late breaking news in this, so uh, licensed and insured. Well, from the Colorado Secretary of State's Business Division, uh, as of the 25th, two days ago, their business license was delinquent. So uh, if they do have insurance, which I guess somebody has seen it for at one point, how many people think an insurance company is going to cover a business that doesn't have a business license? <laughs> insurance companies try anything they can not to pay. That's a wonderful out. Uh, but wait, we have news. As of yesterday, they have refiled. They paid the late fees and are back in good standing with the business. Well, A, because they heard we were doing this. <laughs> um, but you also have to look. They failed to file their report quite a while back. So let's see, April. They've been doing lots of business since then. Uh, last year, them and their co-company, which we'll talk about, cleared somewhere between thirty and forty thousand dollars last year. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have the group, and that's the primary group. Yeah. Uh, originally, there was another group called RIP that this group split off from. Now, there's another group that is going to split off from these guys. They're all using the same business model. And that is Colorado Air Attack. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like they've really got their crap together? <laughs> um, so, yeah, creators of the ghost lags. And uh, they make all kinds of that absolute garbage. Go on the eBay, look for Colorado Air Attack. They have some wonderful items for sale. When they say prototype devices, that means none of this crap works. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good segue here, but they do use science, just ask them. Uh, State-of-the-art equipment to gather the evidence, and the equipment that they have, I'm telling you, is simply the best you can buy. Uh, they have such items as the ghost meter, the K2 meter, the spirit box, that's what threatened them. Uh, the maglite flashlight, because those talk to dead people. See what this is right here. We call that a shack hack because that was a radio you could buy a radio shack. It was just a, a FM radio. So what they do is they throw it on the ground, stomp on it, break it. Now it's a ghost box. Um, what it does is they, they clip a little transistor in there so it doesn't uh, lock on any station. It just goes back and forth across all the stations. So you get a bunch of noise with an occasional word from radio stations, I suppose. Um, that was crazy talk, it's ghosts. Um, <laughs> and that's, that's one of their uh, scientific devices. Now, we all know how scientific a mag light is. Yes, it is. Well, the tour begins. So first, their fearless leader has to make sure that she once again reassures everybody that this money isn't going to them. Um, well, I just want to thank you guys here. Thanks a lot for coming out and supporting us. All the money that um, that you guys have donated and brought in, your grandma is not making any amount of it. All of it goes towards the cemetery and the benevolent society and the restoration society. So just let you guys know that. And you'll notice that they were actually using like a little dolly to move the caskets around and move their equipment. They were very nice and using whatever they could find. Uh, the next clip here, how many people know what an electromagnetic field is? You're doing better than their tech guy. <laughs> First he says it's an EVP meter, which I don't have a clue. But I'm going to let him blather on for about 20 seconds here and explain how a natural EMF meter works. And since you know a lot, this will be really good. Yeah, and the track of meter is this is the one of the few EVP meter in that meter does pick up all three sections segments of the electric magnetic field. It's a magnetic radio and a And the nice thing about these is the sum total three of the other one. So the less more likely to pick up something like that. Now this one in particular EDM does not pick up that many electrons. It only responds to 
we had Dr. Karen Stolzman, who did that great talk earlier, and we have Logan here, who did that wonderful talk earlier as well, and Brian, they all went in. I sat in the car and claimed that my feet hurt. And I watched movies while they all went in and did this. <laughs> yeah, that's why you're doing the lecture. That's why so you're I'm standing up here going, and it's a great fun. But uh, what do you want to say about this? Well, it, it's interesting. This door is claimed to open and close on its own. There's a vortex at the bottom of the stairway, so you got to be careful of that. But they just go on and on about all of these stories down where they used to store the bodies. Well, when the ground was too cold to dig in, that's the whole story. Now, at this point, we go out to the cemetery. Uh, their historian, he's reading from three by five cards. He has a book with him on the history of the cemetery, which those three by five cards were being written as the rest of the class was going on. So their historian really wasn't too hip on the history. Uh, but it, it kind of starts right here. Now we've got people, they're dragging the meters out, throwing them onto the crypt, and it's about to get much worse. Okay, mid-tour, here we are outside of one of the crypts. Now, one thing I want everybody to think, when you see something like this going on, what would you think if this was your grandmother's grave site, or your grandfather's grave site, and you found somebody doing it? Hello, can you hear me? What does it smell in there? <laughs> now, I really want to stress, this has nothing to do with religious beliefs or whether or not the spirits of your ancestors are in the cemetery. Uh, let's, let's just be honest. If you have somebody buried in a cemetery, uh, on top of the financial burden that it created, uh, you also kind of bury the memories there. That, that's a place you can go to and visit to kind of feel a little closer to those memories. You know, this is nothing about actual spirits that they're not letting rest in peace. We want to get across, this is about disrespect. You know, if, if you had a child that died, that was in this cemetery, and then you've got a bunch of these jackass ghost hunters out there hunting, you know, that, that that's just really offensive. And that's more than anything what we want to get across with this. But you can see here, while giving the tour, not only standing on the grave, but standing on the headstones. step farther, just like he said, let's say you have a child there. What do you do when you go by in the middle of the night and you see somebody out there with a flashlight in your child's grave like this? And not just playing with the headstone, but going down and rifling through stuff on the grave. And you know what's become popular with this? A lot of people like to leave toys or treasured items by the child at the grave. Um, in fact, that ghost hunters go in, steal those items, and then sell them on eBay as haunted items. So, remember we were talking about the urban legends that the Benevolent Society was concerned about? One of them was the witches. There's a very famous family, the Bacon family, uh, big in Colorado Springs history, that, uh, well, let's just say that they were, uh, they were a religious group of people, given the time, and uh, it's kind of nice to keep their memory of what they were and how they were, not this. A lot of folks know the first chain. Um, back in 2003, this mausoleum was vandalized, and they broke into the mausoleum and they took Mrs. Bacon's spine and head, oh, skull, excuse me. Um, it was reported that she was a witch, and there, I mean, it's just rumor, and they think some kind of group broke in that's what they think. There's no evidence of that. Yeah, they have never it. found, though. They have never found her skull or her spot. Well, whoever did it went through a lot of trouble to get it done. That's yeah. right. Because only where the doors were locked. 
kind of get the gist of that? Because of FCC regulations, human beings can't cuss on the air. I guess dogs can. But, <laughs> but they confirm it by saying, if you're there, cuss. Um, how many of you know about audio pareidolia? Okay, so need I say more? Um, you're you're going to hear whatever you're expecting to hear. Well, and now on their little forum they have, we've got people that went with their own ghost boxes, and now they're talking about what responses they got. I'm going to be nice and skip past this because of the time and the fact that it says nothing. I'll just let you know that right off the top. But um, they ask it to cuss, and of course it does. And then they ask how many of you are there, and of course it tells them which it really doesn't. But uh, we sent a report off to the Benevolent Society. And it was bigger than that. We didn't give them a laminated card. Actually, it was a lot smaller. It was like this big. Well, yeah, we really made that bigger. <laughs> but we hand-delivered this thing, brought it down, sat down and explained it. They said, we really need to get this to the city cemetery manager, because he's the one that's in charge of all of these decisions. Just, we help clean it up, we help restore things, but he's the deciding factor. We never heard anything. So we decided to contact him directly, which we did, and uh, wrote him a nice little letter, basically the same one that we wrote to the Benevolent Society initially, but also excluding the problems, or including the problems with the tour. And we gave him two weeks to let us know what the decision was. Mostly because we were in a hurry to talk about this and Scott the time to get short. So he almost immediately sent back an email stating that sent the leaders of Pure Paranormal a copy of your findings and been asked, sorry, have asked them to reply to me in writing their explanation of the allegations. These aren't allegations, we've got it on tape. Uh, they have been banned for after hours until I am satisfied that they are a reputable group and I don't follow their website. Well, the interesting thing about this is Pure Panic has started running to everybody they've ever done an investigation for asking for reference letters. And I know they got one. So after the two week period that we uh, kind of gave them, he wrote back saying uh, he can't control what's on their website, but they've been banned until further notice that if they show up after hours, they'll be cited for trespassing. So we made sure to send off a really nice letter to the mayor saying what a great guy the city sanitary manager was for banning them and that they needed to be aware of this. This was also emailed off to, well, a version of this, off to all of the city council members. Three of the city council members and the mayor both responded with a thank you. So at least they know about it. But are they really banned is the question. On their website now, yeah, they, they've gotten clever. Since they know that we're on their trail or watching every move they make, they've decided to make everything they do secret until you've signed up and paid. Then they'll reveal where they're going to be next. So anybody here in Colorado Springs that would like to do a little extra sting on them, you know exactly how to do it now. Now, we were talking about their tech guy. He's the one that was uh, being begged for when he asked about what, what Milagos was, what EMF is. Well, very recently, the group has yet split one more time. So what we have now is Colorado Paratech has become its own nasty little entity. But if you read their statements, it's the same thing. Nonprofit organization, the only difference is they use state of the art equipment and proven scientific methods. Now, the big question is does it really matter? You'll listen to this. This is a video posted on YouTube. And the first thing you're going to hear is the date this was recorded. August 
cemetery. And then one night we'll come back and we'll do a investigation here and try to see if these pieces will see. So he has just admitted to going to go back there one night. Guess what's closed at dusk? So we have absolute proof here that because people are pushing these stories, the cemetery is haunted. They're actually posting that they're going to go break into the cemetery after hours to do their investigations. And this is long after they knew what was going on with us. The new stuff. Now, I don't know how many of you heard about the news story yesterday. There was a gentleman in Clifton, Colorado, that was fired from his job because he was doing a bit of air guitar uh, to try to win concert tickets from a radio station. And uh, he was filmed gyrating and everything over this, uh, this grave. Now, the grave was not even uh, used yet. I mean, it wasn't, there was nobody in it. Uh, just a liner. It was just a liner at this point. He was fired, and he is now facing charges of desecration of venerated objects. Um, so there wasn't even anybody in the grave. How much worse is what he did than what Pura does on a practically weekly basis? But is it illegal? Well, we'll let you interpret your own way here that uh, desecration is, and it means defacing, changing, polluting, or otherwise physically mistreating in a way that the defendant knows will outrage the sensibilities of persons likely to observe or discover his actions or his result. So let's ask you, <laughs> how do you feel? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about what, what happened in this cemetery if it had been at uh, your loved one's grave? Is there, is there any, any emotion that comes up at all? Uh, it's, it's, really... it's annoying. I work while I, I worry about the people that are finding this grave. Exactly. So they don't come back. <laughs> right, right. Now, to be perfectly honest, a group of skeptics and atheists are, are not the best people to try to get sympathy for a graveyard. Uh, but I'm sure that a lot of you can, can understand how this could cause some outrage. And it is disrespectful, not to the dead, but to the living. Yes? Have you guys tried to get local news coverage about this? As a matter of fact. <laughs> Is that your next slide? Uh, actually, what was happening during lunch, we were in the room over there being interviewed by a local station. Uh, what's the station? Uh, 13. KRDO. KRDO. Yes, and they'll, they'll be showing the piece uh, this next week. They're going to try to get back to us. So. They did interview the, the, what am I trying to say? Will the board. And they interviewed the, the, manager. the manager of the cemetery. And I guess he was uh, as non-specific as he could be, but said that they have been thrown out and are not coming back. Uh, but that's all he was willing to say. Pure Paranormal has not been able to be reached for a comment. And uh, it's been several days now, and they, they won't respond, so. Question? What does the tour cost? Uh, $25. <laughs> $25. How much? $25. I paid in all shame. Yeah, just to be a tour keeper, I will change. <laughs>
people that watch TV you saw Ghost Hunters thought it would be a really neat thing to do. And, and it's interesting because the profile that we usually get from these kind of people is they all look like they're out of a biker game. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing how often that happens. But uh, yeah, we, in fact, I don't know, a few of you might have seen our last presentation, which was Investigating the Investigators, and uh, where we actually infiltrated a group in a completely different way. And we kind of called it um, uh, kind of gorillas in the mist. <laughs> but the leader of the group really looked like a gorilla um, with uh, except with a lot of tattoos. Yeah, um, a t -shirt. So yeah, I asked him at one point, um, you know, have you ever been to prison? And I was going to make a comparison for him. So I asked him, have you ever been to prison? And he's like, yep. And I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 Do you have a follow up at all as far as that uh, previous conference? We're, we're kind of constantly following up. Um, he is uh, he had just, uh, I don't know if Dr. Uh, uh, Levy is still in here or not. Looks like he snuck out. OK. Um, yeah, everybody is fine. Nobody's uh, killed themselves or anything like that. Uh, but uh, for those of you that don't know, basically what we did is we set up this scenario um, with uh, uh, Rich Orman back here. We used his house as the haunted house because we were pretty sure it wasn't haunted. Um, so that was the haunted house. And Karen got to be his fiance. That was a movie. I don't know if I should say got to be because it wasn't like a prize. <laughs> was the fiance who was moving out here from San Francisco. She didn't want to move in the house because she got weird feelings there. <coughs> so she got this group to come in and investigate the house. And we sat upstairs with video cameras. We were in the same house with them, and they didn't know it as they came in to investigate. It was ridiculous. But after they discovered that this was the most, and we didn't set anything up. It's not like we had strings attached to stuff or anything. It was they just walked into the house. They discovered it was the most haunted house they had ever encountered. And they needed to call in extra help because they needed to cleanse this house. So who did they call? Us. <laughs> so then we had to make up a fake ritual because we didn't want to like just get one off the internet or something. Because then they could say, well, even though you didn't believe, you said the right words, so it actually worked. We didn't want to take that risk. So we made up a ritual that involved putting out fruit loops and stuff. I mean, <laughs> I used a Gaelic lesson on how to ask somebody how old they were. And, uh, it, was, it was absolutely ridiculous. I used a little bit of hypnosis. Uh, Rich's dogs went around eating up the fruit loops. And, um, <laughs> we cleansed the house. It was successful because all of his little meters read zero. When before they were off the charts reading 666 and everything. So, unfortunately, in the process, the leader of this group was possessed by a demon. <laughs> but, you know, you know, if you're going to play the game, you better be prepared to get tackled. So, uh, that's, uh, all, all's well that ends well with that. Um, we've been monitoring his activities uh, to make sure that there's no lasting psychological damage that we may have been adversely caused. <laughs> well, he, he does have a pet ghost now. Apparently one followed him home from one of their later investigations, and now they take it with them everywhere. Is his name Slimer? <laughs> yeah. So that was a very interesting one, but yeah, we've, we've been keeping an eye on it, and we've been trying to sort of infiltrate his barricaded mind with some critical thinking, and it's been very difficult trying to get him to change his perspective on things. He's kind of in it. But the main reason we did it was not to change him, but to alert the general public the dangers of inviting these people into your home. Because these people aren't going to be changed. This is what they do. This is what they believe. Um, uh, you're not going to change a hardcore atheist any more than you're going to change a hardcore Christian. These people are the same way. They believe what they believe, and damn it, that's the way it is. So what we need to do is alert people, hey, these people can cause you a lot of damage by coming into your home. And that's our main message with that. Just like people like this, along, they're educating everybody on their tours to come out and disturb things and cause vandalism and, and uh, disrespect things, uh, along with teaching them to go into people's homes as well. So that's the kind of stuff that we want to put a stop to. Um, any other questions? By his, anything doesn't have to be about uh, uh, the subject at hand. Some chick, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Yeah, the problem is, is since we're not... Well, whoever, uh, she's actually their anchor. 
Their desk girl. I can't think of her name. Desk girl doesn't sound as <laughs> She's the woman behind the counter. Uh, uh, I don't know what her name is, but she was there. She, she was very good. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she's very good. I can tell you that much. Yes. Uh, when you went on the tour, was it camera hidden or? Oh no. That's the nice thing about this is we're another paranormal team, and we're there to collect evidence like everybody else. And we so, did. So yeah, rather than <laughs> wander around trying to hide a camera or something like we normally would do, we're taking pictures of them, walking around with video cameras. And they're too stupid to realize we're not doing anything but taking pictures of them. Asking stupid <laughs> questions that they're answering very stupidly. Uh, so so it was feel special that it's going on around them. I was actually on the, the one guy knocking on the mausoleum was pretty much like this the whole time with the camera just watching them. Yeah, it was it was absolutely absurd how well the problem is, is the group that, that we did the sting on before when we did the investigating the investigators thing, uh, and pure paranormal, they have really one goal to be on TV. And they love any kind of attention you'll give them. Not like us. We're not <laughs> Well, it is kind of funny because uh, we get we get contacted by production companies all the time. Hey, we want to do a TV show about you guys. Or not since yet. The yeah. news, not since this um, But we don't go out seeking it. We don't try to make our own TV series. If you go on YouTube, you'll see all these groups have their own TV series on YouTube, and uh, they're really desperate. They're contacting production companies all the time. We don't. We don't really care. We've turned down more production companies than what we care to even mention. But. Um, we just enjoy making a big joke out of the whole thing, you know, in a sense. Except for these kind of things that we get pretty offended. Yes? I'm very curious as to why they chose you guys to come in for the expert help. Because, I mean... We decided before this that we weren't going to answer any of your questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me see if I can answer yeah, this, this. This is interesting. There's one long sentence for this. Before we picked them, because we were looking at all sorts of different uh, we got an email from them, which I never responded to, because I don't want to deal with people like that most of the time, saying, we see that you've been to the melting pot in Littleton, which we have been, and we've kind of been kicked out because we said that they didn't have ghosts. Well, see, you know, we always say, anytime we do public speaking that's not in front of skeptics, we always say, now, we're not saying that ghosts don't exist. We can't say that a place isn't haunted. And then we say, except for the melting pot. <laughs> so they, they kicked us out. They went back. Yeah, well, he, he contacted us because he had all of these great PVPs that he got there. He wanted us to listen to him and tell him they were cool. And I didn't. But apparently we were the only group that had any kind of contact with them. I don't know why. So well, when you do it, you what, what do you get pretty patient? Obviously. What's that? Every year, you guys have a reputation. We do, time. but if you look up ghost hunting or paranormal in Colorado, we're one of the first ones that comes up on Google. Now, to give you an idea of how well this guy uses Google, <laughs> I, I told him that the demon that was in this house was Pazuzu. Now, if anybody knows who Pazuzu is, he's not a Christian deity at all. He has nothing to do with Christianity. But this guy, uh, like Logan, and Logan played Rich's son in this whole saga, and, and he was the narrative well, death rockin' and son. And uh, he asked the guy, he, you know, we were just getting ready to do this investigation, and he asked this guy, aren't you scared? No way, bro, I got the light of God around me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we know exactly what his bent is, right there. And so when we told him Pazuzu, he had no idea who it was, and he went to Google, typed in Pazuzu, went down until he saw the word Lucifer in the same sentence. Clicked on it, got his information. Pazuzu was one of the generals that was kicked out of heaven along with Lucifer. Now Lucifer took Pazuzu with him. He was one of the 13 generals that he took. Now, in, in mythology, none of that's true. He's a Mesopotamian god. Uh, he's he's the, the, you know, or god of pestilence and, and uh, the lord of the flies, you could say. Um, so the funny thing is, we looked at this website it was the Marvel Universe. <laughs> 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 
Howard the Duck number three is where this information came from. <laughs> he doesn't read anything but what he wants to. He focuses on uncertain senses and doesn't apply anything else around it. So we're this very reputable group. He doesn't realize that we're a very reputable group who's out to kick his ass. So he gives us a call and says, please, you guys are so good, and we know that you specialize in cleansings. No, it's been okay. We do now. We're your guys. <laughs> yes. As they did, and your still they would immediately realize that Karen and I are directly related to you. Logan brings up a good point. What we did is we had we had rules. How many of you know what Project Alpha was? Okay, quite a few. It, it was kind of a skeptical scam, I guess you could say, uh, where Banachek and another gentleman by the name of Mike Edwards and Jane Franny fooled a bunch of scientists into believing that they had real psychic powers and they could bend metal, all that kind of stuff. Well, they had certain rules that we applied. And that's if anybody in this came up and said, is this a fraud? We were to say yes. We gave real names. Uh, we didn't fake anything like that. So they could have looked up Karen. They could have looked up Logan. They could have looked up Rich. And when you look up Rich, one of the first things that comes up is a picture of all of us together at an IIG meeting. You know, he could have had us pegged like that. Did no research whatsoever. So we just sailed on through. And uh, no problem. We stung him like crazy. And it, it should have been a wake-up call. People do a little bit of investigation. You might not have stung them. Hasn't changed anything for these people so far. Makes it easy for us, though. Yeah. Anything else before we get out of your way? Yes. Yeah, so we're talking about being disrespectful to go to the cemetery and things, not taking those experiences to people around. When does it become disrespectful to mock or to investigate? Does it ever, does it ever become? Listen, Baldy, we try not to. <laughs> gave me this. <laughs> um, now the thing is, is that's a really good question. He asked, when does it, when, when do we cross the line into being disrespectful? All the time. <laughs> and, and, and Dr. Dr. Levy actually uh, gave us a really good way to gauge that. Because we were like, we came to him and we said, oh, we did something so unethical. And he said, yeah, but was it funny? <laughs> Does the funny outweigh the unethical part? So if, if we stick to that, we seem like we're doing okay. So, um, but we do we rely on you people to keep us in check. So we got to thank you for that. That's why we come up here and stand in front of you to help keep us on the straight and narrow. Because to be honest, without the help of, of Rich and Karen, we probably wouldn't have gone to talk to Dr. Levy about the possibility that we could be psychologically hurting this guy by convincing we just got possessed by a demon. <laughs> we thought he was a drama queen and we weren't gonna, you know. But because we've got good skeptics that uh, we, we like to keep around us, that helps us keep from going too far. And so you guys really appreciate your skeptical friends because they're liable to save you from doing something really stupid. Her. <laughs> 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 Her. <laughs> right, well, thank you very much.